What's up, Cycle Fam? Welcome back to the channel. We are here, the final verdict, the video that everyone has requested. The feedback has been insane. I don't know if you've seen my last video when I did my first impression of the System 6, and it was my first maiden voyage ride. Maiden voyage ride. <laughs> I can't talk. And super hyped you guys really enjoyed it and at the end of that video i requested just 30 likes easy 30 likes and i based that off of my previous videos but i didn't expect such a huge feedback and here we are uh that that video has blown up tremendously and we're gonna talk about it we're gonna get into it because we're just gonna start from the bottom up and the most important part is the contact point. So right now I have 28 millimeter Vittoria Corsa Control 2.0 on these tires. Sorry for the background noise. I'm doing this around construction because Atlanta. <laughs> uh, Vittoria Corsa 2.0s, really good tires. Uh, another crowd favorite is the Continental GP5000s. Moving up to the bottom bracket, there's a BB Infinite ceramic bearing in there. Love it, super smooth. You definitely don't feel like you're wasting, wasting any watts as you're pedaling. Like I said, this bike, previously in the video I've said before, this bike responds immediately and just when you're adding other components to your drivetrain that has less resistance, I highly recommend. Ceramic bearing is a good place to start. Now, this is a press fit bottom bracket. Cannondale has officially went away with that on their new Super 6 Evo that they just released with the Lab 71. So hopefully when we do see the new System 6, they'll be continuing that trend. Can't wait to see that bike. And when we get into aesthetics, I'll point out some of those things that I would hope Cannondale pays attention to and that they fix just little, little parts that are kind of sore on the eye on the bike if you look really close. But yeah, ceramic bottom bracket. I do want to go ahead and continue that trend along with the drivetrain, which right now is the Ultegra mechanical. I do have everything internally routed. No problems there. I don't have any issues with shifting. I don't have any issues with braking. Shifts really well. And I don't have any issues with noise coming from the head tube. So and then moving on to the saddle, we have the Pro Logo. Dimension I-43, I have no complaints with the saddle. It sucks when you get into this sport, one saddle does not fit all. Uh, your butt is very different, and sometimes you do have to run that, that expensive risk of getting a bunch of saddles until the one fits you. So um, I enjoy the saddle, I'm glad I don't have to replace it or change it. So Donovan, what's the verdict? 1,800 miles later, I'm just gonna round that up. It's about a month and a half to two months living with the bike. I would say about the first two weeks to two weeks and a half, I was getting myself used to my fit. I had to get myself acclimated. Bike fitters, cringe now. This will be the time to cringe. I haven't done one yet. I haven't done one yet. I need to do one. I feel like I've got myself to a point where I'm comfortable, I'm within range but there are some micro adjustments that need to be made. My left leg kind of goes to sleep a little bit. Cringe now. And then once we leave this point, <laughs> but yeah, it just took some time for me to get myself comfortable. And I had issues with my saddle being up too high, uh, trying to copy and paste from my last bike. Not quite the same, this bike is so aggressive, guys. It is very aggressive, which works for me because I ride aggressive. I still have back left. I'm 31 years old, so I'm gonna use whatever back that I have left 
until I uh, have to get my bars in my chest. So very aggressive bike and I realized I could not copy and paste the fit that I had from my previous bike. So saddle had to come down a little bit and also for me to get my right power range on the bike. But once I did that, oh, every ride is a joy on this bike. Nothing but fun, smiles, laughter. Like I've found myself talking to myself on my rides like, oh my God, this bike is insane. It's insanely fast. And I've made sure to do all the different rides on this bike, recovery rides, group rides, training rides, fast paced rides, and a race. And I said I wanted to do all the elements to put this bike really through the test, to be 100% honest with you guys, because what I did not want to do was give you a review off of my excitement. And with my excitement with the bike, can skew how you really feel. It's just like you live with a car for a while, you drive it, and you're just like, mm. When you left the dealership, you loved it, but then you lived with it for about a month and a half or so, and you realized, why did I buy this? Good thing I don't feel that way about this bike. <laughs> Weight is, we're gonna talk about the con real quick since we're here. The weight, 18 pounds, 18 pounds. I have to look it up to be 100% sure and I'll, I'll put that on the screen. 18 pounds, uh, it's heavy. It's a heavy bike, but we're talking about an aero bike. I mean, look at it. It's it's girthy. When, you, when you're sitting on the saddle, it's a big bike. And, and you look down and you notice how beefy the bike can be, but it carries its weight so well. I don't know what kind of sorcery Cannondale has figured out with making such a stiff, compliant, heavy bike that feels light. Everything that is the con, it finds the positive some way, somehow. I can't explain it. It doesn't make any sense. I've ridden other aero bikes, took it on a hill and wanted to get off that bike. But anything that is a steady gradient and hill, it climbs it so well. It's light and you feel, you feel the aero qualities kick in on this bike. That's the part that I think is more insane is that when you're riding, you feel the aero benefits that you get from the bike. It really cuts through air. And when you're on group rides, when you're on fast training rides, it holds. Once you get to a certain miles per hour, it locks it in. It locks it in and the rest is history after that. It, it's insane and it's almost not fair. <laughs> Another con I could say for this bike is and I'm not 100% sure, like everyone I've seen ride this bike are pretty on the weighted side. You have guys who ride this bike, they're not worried about weight. Uh, shaving weight, having to make it the lightest bike ever. I have seen the most ugliest renderings of this bike where everyone tries to cut it down to make it a climbing bike, put really shallow depth wheels on there, climbing wheels and it just doesn't look good because the bike is so beefy and then you have it sitting on these shallow wheels. It just looks like a top heavy bike. But the con is, if you don't have punchy power, if you don't have immediate snap, you will definitely feel the weight of this bike. You, you'll feel the weight of this bike. I've, I've heard a couple people say, uh, yeah, you get it up to speed, it feels a little sluggish, but when this thing is going, it's going, and it doesn't stop. I haven't had that happen. I, when I need it to go, it go. And I think it really depends on power profile, so that's where the polarizing difference can be between how riders feel on this bike, and you probably can ask anyone, it's a joy, it's fun to ride, it's this, it's that, and then you hear someone else say, man, I feel sluggish on it. You have to have some punchy power. Handles are very sharp. If we're getting into cons, another thing I can say is you'd have to get really used to its preciseness. It's very twitchy. It's very twitchy and I think because of its shorter wheelbase compared to the Super 6 Evo, 
I've noticed that when I've ridden the bike with no hands, shifts around a lot. Shifts around a lot, and it's a little bit harder to ride with no hands on this bike. So that's one, that's another con. I'm looking, I'm, fine, I'm trying to find cons for you guys to nitpick. I'm really just nitpicking at this point. Um, but when you're diving into a corner, you point it there, and that's exactly where it will go. So the final period on this review is I've taken this bike on a road race. It was a 44 mile road race, total of about 1800 feet of elevation, very fast. It was definitely more fit for a sprinter. It was a definitely a sprinter's type of road race. Not a lot of breakaways to get away. I'll be posting that video on the channel as well. Crazy sprint finish. And I'm gonna show you some clips or a clip of that finish. Just a little bit of a spoiler, just to get, show you guys like this thing can, can haul, haul cheeks and just to keep it clean. It can haul ass, man. It can haul ass. It is so responsive, so fast. In the group with road races, you have to stay on one side of the road and there's always little tight places and gaps for you to fit. And if I needed to get to a gap immediately, as soon as I accelerated, boom, I was there. It was like, you just teleport. It, it teleports you to where you wanna be. So, yeah, I don't know what, what else I can say, guys. It's a great bike. I highly recommend it. Highly, highly recommend it. I know right now, Cannondale is just, they're going crazy, okay? They released their new Super 6 Evo and the system is probably gonna be somewhere close behind it and I'm waiting to see what that looks like. I definitely want that new Super 6 Evo. Not paying Lab 71 money though. That's 15K, that's a lot of money for a bike and my wife would kill me. But with all that being said, I wanna get into the aesthetics real quick and we're gonna wrap this up because it's getting dark. I'm so glad that the time has flipped for us now in Eastern time so we have more daylight but winter is not done with us yet, so we still have some cold days ahead of us. But let's talk about the aesthetics. Two things, or mainly one thing I really don't like about this bike. So, and it's probably for aero gains. If you look right here in the head tube, it's got this dip. So it kind of just goes around and under. And if you look at it at a dead on profile, it does look kind of funky, it looks a little weird. If Candel can clean that fork up where it's just like a straight shot going all the way down, I think it would look so clean. I think it would just look so clean. But it's not, it's a beautiful bike, guys. Like I'm really nitpicking for y'all to be honest. I'm just really just trying to be 100%. Like what are the things you would look at and be like, I don't like this about this bike. But outside of that one little weird notch. Oh, and the huge polarizing like argument between like the the handlebar system, like if you wanted to get your own handlebar for this bike, like if you wanted Vision, if you wanted, um, I don't know, other, other, other handlebar companies, Black Ape, whatever. Because the way Cannondale set up their cable routing with the inner tube, it's very proprietary to their design. So if you put a different design on there, it looks funky. It looks really, it looks bad. And I'm perfectly fine with the handlebar system on there, but it's on the side of heavy. And, and that was the reason why a lot of people have like changed or gone a different direction with the handlebars. So, okay, I would say that's two things. So you have the, the, the weird dip right here in the front, and then you have the handlebar system, the not safe system. I love it. I think it looks good. It's fine stock. I am 180 pounds. Do I care about weight? No, I really don't. And if I really needed something that's light to climb, I have my CAD 12. And if I really am sucker for weight, then just I'm just gonna go lose some weight. You know, and you, when you get into race fitness, there it is. But anyway, guys, this is my System 6. Love this thing. I, it is everything that I enjoy. It's an aggressive bike, okay? If you buy this bike, it's an aggressive bike. And if you're a person that don't really ride aggressive, I highly don't recommend. If you're a person that wants a more relaxed geometry, the previous Super 6 Evo 
has a higher stack on the head tube. That gives you a more relaxed geometry. I like the aggressive fit. I absolutely love it. Sometimes I feel like if I'm not aggressive, I'm not aero, I'm not moving fast. And that's just my, that's my MO with that. If you see me riding, I'm aero, <laughs> okay? If you guys wanna see more of these review videos, let's say 100 likes, because apparently 30 was just, that was easy. Y'all just walked over that, like 30 likes, that's all you got down there, like, that's all you're asking for. I really appreciate that love. But yeah, 100 likes, we could talk about it all. We could talk about comparing power meters, stages versus Asioma. We could talk about Hammerhead. I have, I'm a, I have an ambassadorship with them. We could talk about a lot of stuff, guys, and then continue to post race videos on that. But outside of that, I really appreciate y'all watching, showing love. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, subscribe. It can really help this channel out, help this channel grow so I can keep giving you guys dope content. And let's just keep the vibe going. Mr. Down the Cyclist, peace.